Good morning, everyone. I'm going to give you some information about diseases that well, seems to be on a timer. Uh, how do I stop that? Let's see. I'll give you some information about what we can expect with diseases coming up this season, but I'm going to follow suit with uh, Blake and try to give you a little more general information about some of these diseases. We have new agents involved and uh, agents that are having to deal a lot more with issues in sugarcane as the acreage increases in their parishes. So if we have a big freeze, low temperatures, long duration, it will definitely affect the disease situation as within six in the, in the season that follows. Disease that we've had a lot of trouble with in recent years is brown rust, and it's caused by a fungus that infects the leaves and causes these rusty brown lesions and masses of rusty brown spores. And, and it likes mild conditions, so it's a spring disease. And if it gets on the young leaves, what you see is uh, reddish looking fields of cane, and, and those are the leaves that see the sun. So the longer it's on there, the more it affects growth in that spring growth period, and it will reduce the yield. So it's an obligate parasite, meaning that it has to live in green leaf tissue. It can't survive in debris or in the soil. So when we have a big freeze like this, it kills the plants down to the ground. It's going to take out the rust in, in local areas. So there's no local inoculum to get it going in these fields in the spring following. So it has to come in from farther south. So actually, there are reports for, for seeing some rust in the susceptible varieties in some of the southernmost areas, particularly in the Lafouche area. One variety, yellow one at 283, has broken the mold. It, it doesn't behave as you would expect. It gets rust, will affect it later into the season, into June when it should be too hot. So we might see a little bit in some nice, good fields at 283 a little bit later. So it affects your best cane on light soils. Um, since it's probably not going to be a big problem this season, I'm not going to spend a lot of time going into t details, uh, the fungicides and conditions of where to look for it. But we got this article on the internet that's managing brown rust and sugar cane that you can link to and, and give you all that information details about the fungicides and where it'll be looking for it and when. Um, smut is another problem we have. It's a fungal disease that infects the, the, the germinating buds or eyes and it grows with the cane and it affects the way it grows. It'll either make a big grassy clump of shoots or little shoots or these ones that grow faster and smaller diameter and they jump up above the canopy and what you see is the emergence of what we call a smut whip. It's a core of plant parenchyma tissue but it's covered with fungal spores and it's emerging slowly over a month or more and continuously releasing spores that blow around in the wind and spread the disease. So uh, these smaller stools are weaker stool are weaker and they don't survive winter freezes as well. So we, we often see uh, Smut does not increase as much during the crop cycle as it does in the tropical areas and you can actually see a decrease after a big freeze. So I'm hoping that we won't see uh, as many smut whips out there waving to the growers. Uh, uh, L01299 is, is our number one variety. It's very susceptible and can get quite a bit of smut. It'll build up. So a healthy seed cane is essential with this variety, but hope we'll see a little bit less problem with smut this year in uh, 299 other varieties that have a problem. A uh, brown stripe is another fungal disease. The lesions are very similar in color to brown rust. So you tend to see more of what we call a halo, this yellow zone around the lesions and on the side of the leaf you don't see these pustules with the spores. And there's a variety factor as well. So this is becoming more of a problem or more prevalent and obvious and particularly with the there are differences among varieties and susceptibility. And L01299 is also very susceptible to, to brown stripe. It's a disease of stress cane. Uh, much more severe when the cane's under nutrient or herbicide injury or weather conditions. So when we've had mild winters and the cane's trying to grow earlier than normal with lower fertility and other stresses on it, and it uh, has really flared up with brown stripe symptoms. So we'll probably, we're seeing less of that this season. The cop is behind. We're just not seeing as much of that. There is no good control measure for it. Uh, 
really it's an indicator of multiple stresses are affecting the cane and uh, most of the time it's been early in the season so we're not even sure what the impact is on, on growth and yield. We don't have a good way to control it to selectively knock it out to find out how it's affecting the crop. We're trying to get some ratings for varieties and get it that in that way. There have been some problems in seed cane fields uh, where you know it's been cut for seed and trying to regrow with stand reestablishment survival. Uh, but it's really kind of been a different set of stresses this season with the later freeze and the wet conditions. So brown stripe hasn't really been as, as prevalent as, as in previous previous years. Well, since the freeze, what kind of weather we had, it's been pretty cool and pretty wet. So um, I'm going to talk a little bit about something we don't cover too often, and that's uh, root rot. So it's caused by a fungus-like organism called pythium. It's in the soil. So these things are called water molds. They, when it's wet, they'll produce, uh, their asexual spores are modal and can produce producing great numbers can swim around and are attracted to roots. So it likes very mild and cooler conditions where it's not as good for cane. So in those set of conditions occur, it's advantage pythium. It starts to cause a little bit more damage uh, than normal. It's a uh, immature tissue. Uh, it destroys immature tissues to get its nutrition. So root tips and uh, lateral roots are the ones that are attacked and rotted. So you can see on the left there a, a root growing in uh, uh, this was from a greenhouse test for no pythium and on the right we're just pythium and not alone and you can see the damage that it can cause. So it's generally not quite that severe under, under normal conditions in field soil but it's there and when it's cool and wet it can cause you know it doesn't kill the plants but it can slow them down but it's in the ground so you don't really realize uh, impact it's having. Unfortunately, we don't have a good control measure other than that's one reason that good drainage, running good drainage is so important in sugarcane in Louisiana, is to minimize the conditions that will lead to more uh, pythium root rot. Let's talk a little bit in general about a uh, broader picture of root disease. Uh, this is a greenhouse test with a large pots and uh, I've shown, it's called an old ground effect on the plant on the left there, the check where got a plant growing in non-sterile sugarcane field soil and in the middle is one where we treated with metal axle now it's methanoxin that's available that gives control of this pythium and you get good control in a pot all your it's hard to get at everything in the soil but here you've got good uh, treatment of all all the root system being uh, getting exposed to the chemical and you can see an increase in growth that's resulting with the control of the root rot very selective for pythium root rot. On the right, you see a plant that's grown in uh, fumigated soil with methyl bromide, so you're knocking out everything in the soil. So this goes into this area where we're calling the growers, what they see is what they call a new ground effect, where it's growing and plants are growing in fields that have no recent history of sugarcane cultivation. Uh, but what we mostly are seeing, what we call an old ground effect. So there's a total microbial community effect that's there with long-term continuous cane cultivation where it's essentially a, a monoculture situation. And what you get is a shift in the microbial community in the soil that becomes, I guess, well, I guess you'd call it detrimental. It's not as favorable for growth. And if it's not there, you see better growth in the cane. So this is a, a complicated situation and it's hard to, hard to get at. We haven't really figured out a way to, you know, one of the growers a long time ago when I first started walking on said, if you could figure out a way to turn my old ground to new ground, you really have done something, but haven't quite managed that one yet. So if you take a core out of those pots that we were just looking at, what you see is you can't really sort it out, but there there is an increase in primary root number. But what you can really obviously see is the lateral root system differences that are there. And of course, those are what are also called the feeder roots. They're picking up the, that's where you're getting the water nutrient uptake. So we have some problems with root diseases. They're much harder to control. And most of the time we're just living with them. Uh, but this season is one where, you know, part of the reduced growth we're seeing in the crop being behind is probably attributable to this pythium root rot. <clears throat> well, lastly, uh, let's talk about healthy seed cane. Uh, 
cane is vegetatively propagated and seed cane is a, can uh, move diseases, increase spread from field to field and increase it in the cane is being uh, spread and increased the disease that goes right along with it. In the case of this is in the case of ones where they're what we call systemic, they're throughout the plant. So there are multiple diseases that are important in Louisiana. This type of smut is that way. Uh, we've got a mosaic a virus disease that's historically important has reemerged or reappeared. Uh, it's certainly systemic and spread in seed cane. Leaf scald and bacterial disease that's in the plants can be yellow leaf and other virus disease that we don't really ever see the symptoms much. Uh, cane is the growing season is too short, but it's there and has not as big of an important effects on uh, growth, but it's there. And our probably our going back historically, our most important disease is retomb stunting disease or RSD. And it's been pretty effectively controlled now with this healthy seed cane program. And to control all of these diseases, we're talking about talking about control with the uh, tissue culture approach. Heat treatment, which is historically what we used to uh, initially to try to get healthy seed cane for planting was targeting RSD. It would, uh, when done right, it would knock out most of it and done routinely give good control of it, but uh, not these other diseases. So tissue culture approach to seed cane and what we have is a public and private sector partnership that produces new varieties uh, are several years away from release. We put it through a process to get it within two commercial seed cane companies to produce healthy planting material that they sell to the end growers. And uh, it will provide, man it'll help us manage all of these diseases and has reduced, help us reduce a lot of problems with uh, these diseases. In fact, probably maybe one of the most important things it's doing is it's allowing us to grow high yielding varieties like 299 being the prime example right now with susceptibility to smut. So it has this problem or a flaw and without this program and availability of healthy planting material that we would not be able to grow this variety. Smut would build up and take it out. So a big benefit from the tissue culture seed cane approach in this regard. Um, this a year like this healthy healthy cane survives freezes better back when we had those big freezes in the uh, late, late 80s uh, so even first double of RSD infected cane have struggling to come back whereas healthy cane comes back better so there is this uh, certification program is under the auspices of it's regulated by LDAF uh, but it's in partnership with the Ag Center and and uh, the breeding programs and the seed cane companies. So it's a program that ensures the quality of the planting material so the growers know what they're, you know, have, can be confident in what they're getting. And the companies like it for an independent verification of the quality as well. So this program has had a big positive impact on uh, diseases and helped us manage these important diseases. And we need to keep you know, people don't have to think about it as much anymore and maybe have a tendency to become complacent because there is a cost involved in regularly purchasing this material. But it's something that uh, you need to encourage your growers to continue to do, and most of them are on board uh, regularly buying and planting some healthy seed cane. So that's kind of what I want to talk about with the diseases. Uh, I'd say this, uh, of course, it's, feel free to contact me. This, this virtual format seems to be very good for uh, getting participation the agents are able to join in. And uh, so for county agents and you're, and you're uh, not as familiar with sugarcane and its diseases, uh, I'll say bring up for your consideration. We put together what we call the sugarcane school. We ran two years running for for young growers and covered all aspects of production. And I had a say a, a presentation for them talking about sugarcane diseases and how they're managed on the farm. We could, I could make something like that available to you. Uh, you know, it was a more lengthy presentation, like a 30 minute presentation or so. Uh, we 
have now we're putting together uh, we have a Facebook page for the Sugar Research Station and now there's a way to make it available to you if, if you'd be interested in seeing something like that to just get a little more background on general information about what are these diseases and how they what causes them and how do you manage them we, I could uh, certainly make that available so if you'd like to have access to something like that please let Kenneth or me, or me know and we'll 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 try to do that for you. So with that, I'll uh, stop.